Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that was weak. That was bad, people. We're in church. We're here to praise our Lord. The sunshine and the humidity is not supposed to be so bad today. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Not a whole lot of announcements. Would like to remind everyone that Tuesday is our Tasty Tuesday Community Meal. This may be the last for the season, so please come. Enjoy the food, the fellowship. It's always good when we're able to get together and praise our Lord. We have the August and September Koinonia sign-up sheet. Yes, we always have sign-up sheets. We Methodists are always into something. Saturday is the Roger and Anita McMartin 50th anniversary celebration. If you see either one of those two, be sure to shake their hand. In today's world, that's a wonderful accomplishment. And now let us Prepare our hearts and minds to worship our Lord. And to help us do that, we have a video illustration.
and his name is Jesus. And to help remind us of Jesus, we also have Pastor Dennis. Would you stand and join me in our call to worship? We look at this world focusing on the pain and confusion, the fears and hatred which seem to abound. What can we help? We wait breathlessly for the goodness of creation to be made manifest in all the world, for this is the promise of God. God is always with us, guiding, rescuing, healing, restoring us. Get ready, dear friends. The promises of God are true. Amen. And now while we're standing, let's raise our voices in praise to our Lord as we sing 10,000 Reasons. It's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song again Wherever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. And my time has come 
Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. I worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship Your holy name. Yes, I will worship Your holy name. Lord, I worship Your holy. Name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, Jesus, I worship your holy name, I worship your be seated. Would you join me in our unison prayer? We are such a ragtag group of people. Some of us are at the top of our game and others just struggle to get through each day. Yet you draw us here where we will find friendship, peace, and hope, not only for our lives right now, but for all the times to come. Stand us up again, O oh God. Dust us off and put us back on the pathways of service and reconciliation. Warm our hearts with your love. Lift our spirits with your power, for we ask these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Now let us listen to the words of our Lord in Scripture. Our first reading is from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 12, and then continued on 23 and 24. Lord, you have examined me and you know me. You know everything I do. From far away, you understand all my thoughts. You see me, whether I am working or resting. You know all my actions. Even before I speak, you already know what I will say. You are all around me with your power. Your knowledge of me is too deep. It is beyond my understanding. Where could I go to escape from your presence? If I went up to heaven, you would be there. If I lay down in the world of the dead, you would be there. If I flew away beyond the east or lived in the farthest place in the west, you would be there to lead me. You would be there to help me. I could ask the darkness to hide me or the light around me to turn into night, but even in darkness is not dark for you, and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. Examine me, O oh God, and know my mind. Test me and discover my thoughts. Find out if there is any evil in me and guide me in the everlasting way. It is time, once again, for young people to come forward and have young people time.
got to be careful how you walk down that center aisle. Could have footprints up your backside. Woo! Okay, I think you, all of you have attended Bible school. Who wants to tell the congregation about, whoa, I am sorry. Guy, you come up to have children's time, you get stepped on. Oh, sorry about that. Um, who wants to say something about uh, our God sighting wall? Will? No, you don't want to? Kyler? Eric? Don't feel like you're put on the spot or anything, Eric. Go right ahead. What's that? I always read the Bible so I just help my mom. Oh, okay. Keaton, you're the last one. Okay. <laughs> so, um, when we were doing vacation Bible school, every time... Every time um, someone thought they saw God and, like, by seeing or hearing or, I don't know, um, by using one of their senses, um, every time they thought they saw God um, in the air or something, um, they would write it down and put it up on our God sighting wall. Right. And so, as you see, there's a lot of God sightings from our vacation Bible school. Now, this is... Last Sunday when we were tearing down uh, the decorations and the props that we use for vacation Bible school, and we got to the God sighting wall, we had a kind of a discussion and said, it'd be a good thing if we left it up. And so, and open it up not just for the uh, kids in our church, but also for you big kids. If you've gone through the week and God has... Uh, blessed you in some way, you know, it doesn't have to be an act um, but that you've done, but somebody else has done, or you've got been touched by the divine, you know, one of those John Wesley moments where your heart was strangely warm, come in. There is, um, there is pieces of paper here, and I put sticky notes in the back, there's pens, there's tape, put it up. And then we'll look on Sunday morning. And as you notice, we use that word hope. What, what does hope mean to you kids? Something better is going to happen? Worshiping. Yeah. Huh? Worshiping. Worshiping, yeah. Worshiping God brings hope. It means that things are going to work out pretty good, don't, don't we? And because we have a Savior by the name of Jesus... Things are going to work out really good. So, because we know that God is with you, for you, and created you for a reason, right? So who can be against us? So, but we want to spread the good news that there's always hope. So we tag uh, God sightings. And I hope you join us for that. You want them to join you? Yes. Okay, so let's pray. Oh Lord. oh, Lord, this is a great day. The sun is shining, and my heart is warmed. It is good to be with you, and we know you're with us every moment of every day, no matter what. We thank you for doing what you do not just for us, but for everyone. In your name we do pray. Amen. Couldn't get that prayer over fast enough. Thanks, gang. Thanks, gang. Well, last week we talked about sower of seeds, about the well-worn path, about the thistles and the thorns and... Uh, the birds that came down and picked up the seeds before it had a chance to uh, be uh, 
uh, germinate. And of course, when we do that, we think of someplace else. And while I was writing this sermon, in the back of my mind was always the question, what, what kind of person am I? When God sows God's seed upon me, am I a well-worn path? Or am I uh, one of those that's got a little bit of soil and lets it grow, and then when adversity comes around, eh, God's a great idea, but not right now. I don't want to get into that. Or am I a person that has a lot of soil, and I'm going to take God's seed, and I'm going to have a great harvest? Because I've got good soil. Well, today we're going to talk about weeds amongst the good plants. And I got to thinking, who am I? Am I a weed or am I a good plant? Well, I'm a minister, so we, we assume that I'm a good plant. But can a minister who's a good plant have weeds? Yeah, I'm going to quote for you young people in the sermon. I say, when you go out and sow your oats, be careful those oats aren't weeds and they're going to be with you for a good long time. Good possibility the rest of your life. There came a conclusion in my lifetime that I was a weed We don't need to go into description as what kind of weed. But I was a weed. And because I was a weed, I had a great weed garden. All sorts of weeds. Oh, man. But I finally came to the conclusion that I needed to do something. Because if I continue to do what I was doing, my family would be a very hungry family, and I'm not just talking about food-wise. So I still have my weeds. Let me ask you, if you've got a flower or vegetable garden, even though you've put down some preen, some ortho, or Roundup, You still get a few weeds? They still know where your garden is? They still know how to grow up them vines of peas and on the green beans and wrap themselves around? And you swore that you were just out there two days ago and they're right back. They don't leave us alone. So do you have your weeds? What do you do about them? How do you hold them? How do you set down the preen and the ortho and the roundup to control them? And you know if you go away on a vacation for a very long time, Your garden is not going to look like the pretty place that you left it. So you got to stick at it. So think about your garden. Think about your life. What are the weeds that are in it? And what do you do about it? So let us join in singing that hymn, I Was There to Hear Your Burning Cry. The scripture lesson today is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30, and continue to 36 through 43. Will you please stand? Uh, You can find it in your pew Bible on page 1,151. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man sowed good seed in his field. 
one night when everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed seeds among the wheat and went away. When the plants grew and the heads of grain began to form, the weeds showed up. The man's servants came to him and said, Sir, it was good seed you sowed in your field. Where did the weeds come from? It was some enemy who did this, he answered. Do you want us to go and pull up the weeds, they asked him. No, he answered, because as you gather the weeds, you might pull up some of the wheat along with them. Let the wheat and the weeds both grow together until harvest. Then I will tell the harvest workers to pull up the weeds first, tie them in bundles and burn them, and then to gather in the wheat and put it in my barn. When Jesus had left the crowd had and the crowd had gone indoors, his disciples came to him and said, Tell us what the parable about the weeds in the field means. Jesus answered, The man who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed is the people who belong to the kingdom. The weeds are people who belong to the evil one, and the enemy who sowed the weeds is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvest workers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered up and burned in the fire, so the same thing will happen at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels to gather up out of his kingdom all those who caused people to sin and all others who do evil things, and they will throw them into the fiery furnace where they will cry and gnash their teeth. Then God's people will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Listen then if you have ears. This is the God's good news. You may be seated. Well, when I was called by the bishop and the cabinet to the Sutherland Larrabee churches, I um, was, received some calls and asked if I uh, wanted them to start a garden for me. Now, I've never gardened much in my life, a few plants here and there, but not a vegetable garden. So I, I was thinking about it, and their uh, requests were persistent. And after some time and the thought that uh, a nice, ripe, uh, fresh out-of-the-garden tomato on top of a grilled burger or some sweet corn or some zucchini or some cucumbers or whatever um, dietary delights that I could think of, they were kind of swarming around in my head and it seemed like a great idea. So I said, yes, till up some ground and uh, plant me some stuff and uh, I'll be there. Well, in my excitement, I forgot to think about doing some planning. You see, I had to spend some time in Kansas City that summer also to uh, attend some classes. And uh, my good-looking garden when I left was not the same thing that when I got back. Needless to say, it was a mess. Weeds, weeds, and more weeds had consumed my garden, and by the time I finally got to the garden, now remember, I'm a rookie here at gardening. I couldn't tell the weeds from the plants. I couldn't tell the weeds from the, fre <coughs> from the green beans that were growing up. So I just started pulling and tugging, and I knew in my heart that I was pulling something good along with the bad. The quick moral of the story is that if you don't take care of your life, the weeds will take over and you lose the difference. You lose the perspective. That's the word I needed to put down here. You, you lose the perspective of the good stuff and the bad stuff. You lose, and so in life, you may lose the perspective of the moral and the immoral, the ethical and the unethical. And above all, you have problems, may have problems discerning the difference between the voice of God and what is a true weed and what isn't a true weed. You start pulling the green bean plants along with the creeping Charlie. You might say you're in a state of blurred lines. You don't know which way you're going, at least for this rookie gardener. But there's always a next year. 
And I was granted the next year. And so next year, I was determined to conquer the weeds and have a good harvest. I had the soil tilled in the fall and also in the spring. I took counsel with some really good gardeners' uh, advice and found out about things like preen and ortho and roundup and also about blood and bone meal to keep the rabbits out of the garden. And if the bone and blood meal didn't work, plant some marigolds around it. But you know, with all the work I put in, all the planning, all the organizing, all the care that I could, the weeds, I thought that would I have conquered, they came back. They came back into my garden. How dare they come back into my garden? The weeds are persistent, and once they got in, they are determined to stay. I have at a time or two mentioned my 18-year rebellion against God. During that 18-year rebellion, I, al I allowed a lot of weeds to grow, thrive, and prosper in my life. That is, until the day I realized that the garden I was tending was not a, as pretty as I thought it was. Because it was filled with weeds and whatever harvest I was going to get was not going to be good. And if our fi family needed to be fed off of what was in my garden, my family was going to be pretty hungry. So as I did with my garden in Sutherland, I went to a master gardener and got all sorts of advice on how to grow a garden. As we all know, God does know a thing or two about gardens. God also knows a lot about weeds. Instead of preen, ortho, or roundup, God doesn't use those things. God uses forgiveness and mercy. We may have been given freedom from sin and death, but those weeds have a way of returning at the wrong time and the wrong place. The weed knows the attic can fall off the wagon. The weed knows that mental, physical, and emotional exhaustion is fertile soil for its growth and allows the weed many opportunities to be able to thrive. And spiritual neglect is a sign that says to the weed, full speed ahead as there will be no resistance, no poison, only to be free to do whatever a weed wants to do. You may say at one time, I was weed, and so I know something about weeds. After 10 years, 10 years of not smoking, uh, excuse me, I didn't say that right. I quit smoking in 1987. 10 years later, I'm waking up in bed. The weeds returned because I was waking up in bed, puffing on an imaginary cigarette. I hadn't had a drink in 30 years, but because of conflict, a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety that I was going through, I became weak, and I tasted an imaginary beer upon my lips. There are other things that never seem to leave, never seem to leave or pop back up in my life at the wrong times for me. But in those wrong times for me, there are always the right time for them weeds. I'm thankful for Jesus' words that tell us don't go pulling up the weeds as you might also pull up the good plants. In our vocabulary, we have words like repentance, redemption, and resurrection. We are given the freedom to say I'm sorry and be redeemed by our Lord and Savior so that we may gain resurrection personally. I am thankful that it's not over till God says it's over. In today's lesson on the weeds, we might get the thought that once a weed, always a weed. If that be the case, would Jesus tell us to go and make disciples? Would Jesus tell, tell us to go and love our neighbor and spread the good news to all nations? Jesus tells us at the beginning of his ministry, repent for the kingdom is near. Then there is the fact that whether we like it or not, weeds are created by God just like you and me. 
There is a strong suggestion in the gospel message that weeds don't have to remain weeds and the weeds of your life may send you reminders every once in a while that they are still there, ready to be your best friend again. Jesus says it doesn't have to be that way, especially when he says, pick up your cross and follow me. There is hope, always, no matter what kind of weed or plant you may be. And with that I say, amen. Let us sing the hymn, Gather Us In. Any joys or concerns this morning? Yes. We have a joy. We have our two granddaughters with us today, and they've been with us all week, and we've had a wonderful time. Great. That's a joy. That's a God sighting. Uh, one of my joys is that this last week we finished up Bible school, and our mission was to have donations for local shelters. And on Tuesday, I took over probably at least 15 plus boxes and bags to Sienna Francis House, another 10 bags to the Children's Square, and then I deposited a check, or gave a check for $240 to Mom's Place in Council Bluffs. So thank you for all those who donated. All right, there you go. <laughs> Kyler, Fred's got a. I have a joy. I have my granddaughter and her family, and uh, my grandson, of course, who's a regular here today. And I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Fred. I have a couple things. One, uh, David Smith and his wife is joining us this morning. David is up, up at the uh, home, and so it's good to have them join us this morning. 
All right, welcome. And then I have another. Uh, a lot of you know my brother, Harley Leaders. Two of his daughters, about a year ago, applied to be on the game show, The Wall. Uh, they got called, they went up and taped, and coming, this coming Thursday night, they will be on Channel 6 at 8 o'clock. They're from Council Bluffs in Omaha. Their names are Angie and Jody. We don't know if they won or if they lost or they tore up the contract, but it was a $10,000 fine if they even mentioned it. So somebody local, if you want to watch it, I know we're going to be watching it. <laughs> okay. Yesterday, I celebrated my 76th birthday. All right. Happy birthday, Skip. Well, I have a joy and a concern. Uh, two of my classmates have been dealing with cancer, John Myers and... Um, Llewellyn Bolton, and John has taken a turn for the worse again. But Llewellyn um, was very bad for a while, and she got a good report from her doctor and doesn't have to go back for three more months. So wow, that was good. really a joy for her and, and for her friends. Amen. Right. We can clap for good news. Uh, prayers for the people around the McGregor area in the northeast corner of the state. That was one of our worship centers of our last parish. And uh, I know the church up there has been very busy with water, sandwich making, and doing what they can. And tragically, they have lost one person that was uh, part of the cleanup crew. So. Anyone else? I just heard a God sighting. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, let us gather together in heart and mind for prayer. Oh, dear Lord, we never have to be what we think we ought to be. When we find ourselves being described in our own words, a weed, then you give us the hope that the path we're walking on doesn't have to be the path we have to stay on. You have forgiveness and mercy you have resurrection and redemption. And you have a church full of people spreading the good news that there is a better day, always. Because you love us. You love the good plants and you love the weeds. Weeds may be doing some bad things, but... They don't have to stay weeds. Remember how many people Jesus loved that were unlovable to the religious? So Lord, give us strength, give us courage, give us your spirit to lead on, to be your disciples. Not be your admirers, but your disciples so that we may bring the kingdom near, near to the ones who call themselves weeds. And with that, I wish to turn over to you the prayers of the people, so they may speak to you in their own special language. And Lord, I pray they take a lifetime to hear your answer. Lord, hear our prayers.
Now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. This is our trespass as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us take a moment to stand and greet one another and pass the peace that is the Christ. Does anybody know why we have a passing of the peace? What the scriptural background is? Well, he doesn't. <laughs> well, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells all to take the, basically the log out of your eye, go to your neighbor, and make peace before you approach the altar. So, since offering is a way we approach the altar that and on communion Sunday we need to make sure we are okay with our neighbor that all conflict is okay before we approach the altar that's why we have a passing of the peace so since we are all settled down and we're all neighbors would the ushers please start taking the offering so we can pass the blessing and witness to our love in Jesus Christ. Would you join me in our prayer of thanksgiving? Lord, we present these tokens of the many blessings you have poured into our lives. Make us people who are unafraid to proclaim your healing mercies. Help these gifts to bring hope and comfort to all those in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our benediction is, God promised that every family of the earth would be blessed through God's people. You are blessed to be a blessing. You have been blessed. Now go and be a blessing. And with that we all say, Amen. Let us close out by singing this him, love divine, all loves excelling. Mm -hmm.